Welcome to a view to a grill. I'm Johnny and today we're going to do barbacoa de picanha. Let's take a look at our ingredients. For the rub, we are going to use garlic powder, ground comino, onion powder, black pepper, and kosher salt. I'll combine all of these ingredients in a small bowl. I'll start off with a heaping teaspoon of garlic powder, a heaping teaspoon of onion powder, a heaping teaspoon of gomino, a heaping teaspoon of black pepper, and then two heaping teaspoons of kosher salt. Now I'll just get a spoon and mix all of that together until everything is well incorporated. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Now for the meat, we're going to need some beef broth, about a quarter of an onion, and five or so bay leaves. Today I'm going to be using two picanha roasts. Now I like the picanha roast because the meat fibers are short and it makes it uh, a little less stringy to eat as barbacoa. I bought these picanha roasts from our local HEB and they were selling them meat side up so I did not see how the fat cap looked. Now the fat cap is usually thicker on picanha roast and on this one it was trimmed down quite a bit but it was fine. I didn't mind it that much but on the second one the butcher kind of scalped this one pretty bad. I could not see that when I purchased these. These are still going to taste great uh, and sometimes you just have to work with what you got. We are going to season these very liberally. We'll get these seasoned. Once we have these seasoned just kind of press the seasoning right into the meat and we'll do exactly the same for the fat cap side. Once you have these all seasoned up just the way you like, get them into the refrigerator and they'll set up in the refrigerator while we get our grill ready. Barbacoa is not a hot and fast cook. This is a low and slow cook. These two little roasts are going to take eight to ten hours to cook properly so that that meat is just tear apart tender with your digits. Now the charcoal that's in my slow and sear right now is leftover charcoal. I'll get that lit and we're going to sear each picanha roast separately one at a time. I guess separately means one at a time. Yeah. I'm going to use a foil pan and in that I'm going to have two large pieces of foil. And since I want a really tight seal around these picanha roasts, I'm also going to use two large sheets of butcher's paper. And I set it up this way just so I can get a nice tight wrap around both of the picanha roasts. And yeah, that's my speaker that I'm using as a paperweight. Don't judge me. Now that our fire is ready, I'm going to take the picanha roast out of the refrigerator and get them on the grill to get some nice color on them. I like to start grilling them fat side down and then once it's a color that I like I'll get that turned over and do the meat side. Once the first one is done I'll move it over to the indirect side of the grill and get started on the other picanha roast. Now I didn't show this on the first picanha roast because it didn't happen simply because the butcher had trimmed off most of the fat on that roast. This is what you want it to look like when you're grilling a picanha with a full fat cap. The fire is just going to practically engulf your picanha roast and that's a good thing. You want a nice dark crust on the fat cap because that's just going to add lots of flavor. Now, once you're done marking your picanha roast, it's time to get them into that foil and paper wrap that we did earlier. This is when you're also going to add your bay leaves and your onion. And then on top of that, we're going to put our beef broth. I want to add hot beef broth to this packet and not have the, the grill do all the work of getting this up to temperature. And now I have to make a judgment call. I want the broth to come a little over halfway up on the sides of these two picanha roasts and it didn't so I decided to add another half cup of beef broth and this is something you're going to have to judge during your cook. I'll start by folding over one sheet of pink butcher's paper and then I'll get the second sheet of butcher's paper. While holding down the folded portion I'll try to keep it tight and fold 
over the second sheet of butcher's paper. And notice I'm still holding it down while I fold over the foil paper. And since the foil paper, you know, kind of holds together, this will help hold in the butcher's paper. Now, since this is a low and slow cook, I pushed all of the charcoal over to one side. And that's why I started out with that small amount of leftover charcoal, is because I was going to need room in the slow and sear to put unlit charcoal. Now all we're going to do is put the picanha on the indirect side of the grill and close the lid. Now I'm going to adjust the top vent to about this wide, as wide as one of these thermometer probes. And then the bottom vent to the smoke position on the master touch. And since I know my grill, I know this is about the lowest setting I can set the Weber kettle to without snuffing out the fire. And at this point, I wasn't even going to use a thermometer to monitor this cook. I was just going to set it up like this and literally let it run until all the charcoal was gone. I can never do things that simply. Uh, I couldn't stand it and I went ahead and set up my Inkbird thermometer. Not because I wanted to monitor the temperature, it's because I wanted to see the graph of what the temperature did overnight for no other reason than curiosity. This is what happened overnight. Now, I'm not sure why there are these blank spots in the graph. And then you can see here it got a little wavy. So here we are, 716 the next morning. And the reason why I got up was because the temperature fell out of range. I had the bottom temperature set to 185 degrees and the alarm started going off at 716 in the morning. Now I'll just get this off of the grill and we're gonna let this rest for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, let's see what we got. Just get this unwrapped and take a look at that. Still hot, still steamy. And when I pull this apart, it just comes right apart. Now when I was younger, we usually had barbacoa for Sunday morning breakfast and today was no different. My toppings this morning will be this fire roasted tomatillo salsa, some minced cilantro and onions, limes, and sliced avocado with salt and pepper. Now I like flour tortillas, so I'll just get that into a flour tortilla with a couple of slices of avocados, some of that fire roasted tomatillo salsa, a little bit of the minced onions and cilantro, throw a little salt on the top, and there it is, absolutely delicious. I also have some of this creamy jalapeno and cilantro lime sauce and here's what it looks like on a barbacoa taco with a corn tortilla. Now if you've made it this far go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching a view to a grill and I'll see you guys next time. Take care y'all.